perinatal pearl number six, mastitis. You need to know this if you're breastfeeding because the entire advice and understanding of mastitis is completely the opposite of what we used to think. So new guidelines came out about a year ago in 2022 from the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine and uh, a whole new paper has given us a new understanding of what is mastitis and what we do about it. Turns out everything that we previously used to tell people is actually making things worse. So in a nutshell, number one, what is mastitis? Mastitis is uh, well, we used to think it was, there's a duct, a breastfeeding ductule and the milk flows through there. We used to think that mastitis was caused by a blockage that's plugging the duct. Wrong. Mastitis is due to inflammation of the duct. So rather than being nice and big and the milk's flowing, this swells up. And it, when it swells up, it narrows down. And that's what causes the blockage. Okay, important to know that. What causes this? Well, it's a combination of what we call um, uh, to do with the lining, the normal bacteria that's on our skin, on our bodies. Also, we have normal bacteria that lines the inside of the ducts and that's called the natural, the biome. And normally this is in harmony, but sometimes that can get disrupted. What causes it to be disrupted? A whole bunch of different things, but importantly, oversupply and hyperlactation can cause a disruption in, in, that, um, in the lining of the duct that causes inflammation that causes the duct to narrow down and then there'll be a blockage of milk a backlog of milk behind that narrowing so now that you understand a bit more about that you the the treatment that we have previously been recommended and why it's wrong will start making sense to you so i'm sure if you've had a what you feel is a blocked duct or mastitis you've been told right you need to massage it let's massage this area to get the, the blockage out wrong if you imagine this is red sore and swollen like if you've fallen over a bunch of your knee it swells up it becomes inflamed it's sore and swollen if you, you're not going to start massaging your knee are you so you're not going to start massaging your breast either because it makes the swelling worse it makes the inflammation worse okay so number one don't massage it heat don't put, have, have you been told to put heat on it to help the flow? Wrong. Would you put a heat pack on your sore swollen knee? No. Why? Because it causes more blood flow to the area, more swelling makes things worse. So don't use heat packs. Instead, what should you use? You should use ice packs. Anti-inflammatory medication is really useful with this new understanding. So things like if you're able to tolerate something like ibuprofen, naproxen, uh, even Voltaren, they, are, they work as an anti-inflammatory. So again, if this duct is narrowed down, then the anti-inflammatory helps reduce inflammation, swelling, and helps with pain, but helps to open that up and let things flow again. So regular high or full dose anti-inflammatory like Nurofen, Ibuprofen, is a really good idea just to try to help settle things down. Now, what else have you been told? Um, let's try to get baby to feed more. Let's pump more in order to get the milk out in order to unblock this blockage. Wrong. We now understand that it is this hyperlactation, the medical word to say that is increased milk supply that is coming out. It's causing that natural biome in the duct, those normal bacteria to become out of whack and that's what's leading to mastitis. So by pumping more, feeding more on that side, increasing milk supply, it might give a bit of temporary relief if it even works, but it's actually making things worse. So don't. Uh, express any more than your baby needs and only express and only pump if your baby needs it and actually don't pump unless you really have to because pumping can cause trauma to the breast as well because we're not designed to have pumps on our breasts um, um, we're designed for babies on our breasts ideally so don't pump don't express any more milk we want to be able to uh, try to reduce an oversupply of milk so that mastitis doesn't happen again so we've covered um, not pumping more. What about soaking? So a lot of people will be told, yeah, put Epsom salts in a haka pump and let it soak there. Wrong, okay? If we have water on the skin, the skin becomes macerated. Another medical word to say it gets a bit soggy and that damaged nipple, um, that's, that breast tissue there, doesn't like being wet and it just won't heal properly. So we um, recommend you don't soak your breast in Epsom salts or even in saline salts. And there's also no evidence that, 
even though nipple trauma and cracks in nipples can contribute to, um, it's, there's an association with that and mastitis, there is no science or no studies that actually are, are showing that the, um, mastitis is caused by germs or bacteria on the nipple that are going up inside the breast. Instead, we're understanding it's more of this inflammatory process from within the breast, usually from oversupply. So, um, I think they're all the no's. Um, I mean, in summary, oh, massage, let's talk about that for a moment. So, rigorous massage is going to make it worse, but there is such a thing called lymphatic drainage. Now, lymphatic drainage is where you, you can um, very, very gently, like stroking a cat, almost sweeping the skin of the breast towards the armpit there. Um, that can sometimes help to basically milk out a little bit of that swelling and fluid that's in the tissues. Now you're not milking out the duck, the, you're not milking the milk because that's in the ducts, but this is all that swelling in the tissues and sometimes that can help, but it's in this backward direction away from the nipple towards the armpit and then it goes back into the blood, venous blood supply and towards your heart. So if you're going to do any type of massage, it's actually called lymphatic drainage and a, a Good women's health physio can demonstrate that too. You can find clips online, but essentially very gently towards the armpit and away from the nipple. So that's the only type of massage you should be doing in this situation. Okay. Um, the other things you could consider, um, uh, there is some evidence that sunflower lecithin, which you can get from um, online or from the herbal stores, that that, um, that works as an emulsifier, which is again a word to say, like break down the milk a little bit so it's less, less thick. Um, and you could take five to 10 grams per day of that. It may help, it might not. Um, and there is some evidence that probiotics might also be useful. Again, it's not great evidence, but it's, uh, studies have suggested that it might be helpful. You could give it a go and the strains that are important um, or have been in the studies are the lactobacillus fermentum and the lactobacillus uh, salivaris. So you could um, have a look at that um, online if you wish. So um, as far as antibiotics, is there a rule for antibiotics? Well, this is usually a, um, a sterile type inflammation, at least initially. In those first 24 hours, women can get redness of the skin, they might get some fever, they might feel yuck, all these symptoms, and I think, gosh, there's, an there's a bacterial infection there, I need antibiotics. You need to be aware that you, with inflammation, even without a bacterial infection, this inflammatory process can cause all of these symptoms. So um, I, I recommend not launching into taking antibiotics. I know that's what a lot of uh, health professionals will do and they may, may or may not be up to speed with this new understanding that came out a year ago. But important, um, I think if you're going okay, don't launch in with the antibiotics because antibiotics, as we know, they can upset your normal bacteria, your normal flora, and we don't want to make anything worse by knowing that you've had these antibiotics. So there's definitely a role, perhaps if things hadn't improved within 24, 48 hours or things are getting worse, or the signs of breast abscess, which is what we don't want, where you can get a, a collection, an infected collection in the breast, pretty horrible. Um, but there's certainly a role for antibiotics. But if it really is just redness, a bit of a lump there, um, you're going okay, then I want you to just leave it alone, take anti-inflammatories, put your ice packs on, uh, gentle lymphatic drainage towards your armpit if you like, don't massage it, basically don't touch it and don't over pump your milk. So um, only feed bub and please continue to feed bub if, if, uh, if you're able to do so, but only what baby needs and not any more than that. So hopefully this has cleared up a few things for you. Um, please share this because I think this is really important. Every day I'm seeing women coming in and telling me that they've been, you know, they've been looking online, all this information, telling them how to manage mastitis, which is involving all of these things that are gonna make things worse. And they wonder why they get recurrent mastitis and things become a problem. And unfortunately, it can mean the end to a lot of women's uh, breastfeeding journeys, which is, uh, is I mean, that's fine if, if breastfeeding's not for you, but for many women, um, it doesn't have to be like that. So please share this, please tell everyone, I'm trying to figure out how to get this message out there. Everybody needs to know this, most health professionals, out in the community who don't have that special breastfeeding um, and um, postnatal interest, um, they might still not be aware of this. So uh, it can be, uh, you could perhaps help me to educate everybody so that we don't get all of this recurrent mastitis that we see so commonly.